Online gaming is amazing, full of incredibly sophisticated worlds, mind-boggling adventures and a great way for your kids to have fun with their friends. And it keeps them entertained for hours. It's not just the missions and adventures they can play, it's one of the ways they socialise with each other. It's easy to worry about all that screen time, isn't it? But they may be learning new skills they'll use in their career and later life, as so much of the gaming and tech world influences our everyday life. It's a massive industry and it's growing fast. But there are some areas that are important to understand to ensure safe and healthy gaming. By having a better understanding of gaming content, in-game spending and sharing information online, you can help support your kids to enjoy gaming safely. First, we'll give you an insight into the gaming world and how to keep an eye out for your kids' safety and well-being. Next, we'll look at spending money in games, keeping track of how much and watching out for scams. Lastly, we'll look at protecting your personal information online and what to do if they're approached by a fraudster. Games are classified by PEGI age ratings. There are five categories which range from 3 to 18 years old and are legally required on games sold in stores as well as being internationally recognised, like the ones they use for movies. These cover games from young children through to adults and they're based on suitability for an age range and not on enjoyment or how difficult they might be. That content might be swearing or graphic violence, so do check the ratings and make an informed decision to avoid children playing games that they're not old enough or ready to play. It's not just age appropriate content to understand. As you know, it's a huge opportunity for socialising that so many of us are still unaware of. Knowing a bit about how kids connect through gaming can really help you to help them. In those groups or parties, generally the conversations are about games, but sometimes they can include conversations about anything at all. Some games allow children to challenge other players. And in order to do that, they might invite them into spaces called groups or parties. And they can do this by voice or text. Now, in theory, the conversations are generally about gaming in those spaces, but in reality, they could be about anything. That socialising can lead to kids spending a lot of time gaming, but understanding the dangers and benefits of this can ensure we can guide them to more balanced behaviour. Games are designed to be exciting, fun and challenging. And of course, this can lead to children wanting to spend more time on games. Now, today, there's no evidence that gaming is addictive like substance misuse. However, when it begins to interfere with daily life, we do call that problematic. So for you as a family, it's about finding the right balance. Don't worry too much about them spending time online with their friends. Remember, they're forging new friendships and finding new ways of interacting, which could be a big help in their adult life. It's important children do socialise online because this helps them develop skills like turn-taking and fairness. And of course, knowing how to block people is important because bullying can occur online just as it can in real life situations like school. And it's important to have conversations with your children about their safety online and ask them questions like, who are they playing with? What kind of games are they playing? So that you get a grasp of what they're doing. Because gaming is so popular, it's creating celebrity gamers and streamers with huge followings. And this comes with some issues too. Let's play videos, walkthroughs, or streaming as they're sometimes known, are ways for a person, usually an influencer, to stream a game live in order to increase their followers, potentially get tips, and also to give watchers tips and tricks about the game. Now often on these platforms, there are no restrictions as to who can watch. And that means that strangers can speak in the chat rooms along with your children. And it also means that your children might tip or spend money on that streamer. It's worth spending some time watching these streams with your children. And it's not about censorship. It's about understanding the risks and dangers and explaining these to your child.
cost of gaming is important to understand, not just the price of games and consoles, but also how much you can spend when playing the games themselves and how quickly the amounts can add up without you realising it. It's important for parents to have a bit of caution in this area, kind of think ahead and spend time understanding how money might be spent. And then part of that is knowing which credit cards are linked to gaming accounts and then making sure there's a pin on those accounts so no one else can make those transactions without having that number. And if it's a child, then they'd need to ask the parent before doing that. That also means that if a child has a bank account, they can use that as a really nice way to track what they're spending in a game and how that compares to other real world spending. And also modern consoles have reporting built in and they will tell you what your child is spending. They'll give you an email report. And again, you can see, see where the money's going and you can get together with your child and talk about well, what was good value. You, you purchased this item in the game. Did, did that feel like good value? And how does that compare to other things you might have bought in the real world? One of the ways that makes spending so easy is in-game purchasing. The things you can buy to boost your character, access new outfits, or help you complete the level. In a game, you don't just have one upfront cost. Children will want to buy things that make the game more fun. And these come in different forms. They're often quite small in value. These purchases in the game are using an in-game currency. So you, you buy some of this currency with some real money and then you spend it in the game. So again, children can need some help to understand the actual value of the items as they convert from the in-game currency to the real world currency. So helping with that regulation is a really important thing that parents can do. Ways of games companies generating revenue within the game itself keep evolving all the time. Ever heard of loot boxes? The loot boxes are a particular sort of in-game purchase and they're unusual because you don't know what's inside them until you make the purchase. And that could be a really rare item that a child is excited to get, or it could be a really common item that actually maybe they've got already and they're not too fussed about. A really nice feature that all modern consoles offer is a disclosure of what the chances are of getting different items in the loot boxes you're purchasing. So it will tell you there's a 1% chance of getting the very rare items, for instance, and a higher chance of getting the very common items. So helping a child understand what their purchase may result in, in terms of the item they get in the game, is a really useful way to help them regulate how they're spending and also assess, is this good value and is this something that they want to purchase? Loot boxes are about uncertainty and surprise. And of course that's enticing. You want to be the same, if not better than your friends. Helping your child learn to stop and think before they make the purchase can help avoid out of control spending. Using gamers as money mules is another new development that it's good to be aware of. With all the money games are generating, it's not surprising that criminals have taken an interest. They approach young people via in-game chat or on other chat platforms and persuade them to deposit funds into their bank accounts. The money is then transferred on. This can either be presented as a job or in exchange for commission, billed as easy money, of course, or because they have been threatened. But basically, this is money laundering. Fraudsters can also gain access to bank accounts to transfer stolen money without the child knowing. Of course, they can claim to be innocent victims, but an offence like fraud is recorded and can block their lives in the future. Banks and the police have a high detection rate for this, and the penalties can be severe, including having bank accounts closed or making it difficult to apply for a loan, credit card or mortgage in later life. It can affect children's future employment prospects or education, and can even lead to prison. So what can you do? And how do you spot the signs that your child may have been approached or may even be involved? Maybe they suddenly have more money to spend or aren't asking to borrow any. Look for the signs, spot the clues, know how the criminals operate. An important and effective thing you can do as a parent is to make sure your child's account is set up appropriately so they can't be identified by their account username and they know not to share other information. Then if your child does report anything untoward happening in a game, you can use the in-game tools to report those other players or you can use services like Action Fraud, who are specialists in this area. Spending money in gaming can actually be quite healthy. If you think about budgeting, prioritising and learning to say no. Those microtransactions can actually be a good lesson and teacher in later life money management. But if those 
banks' transactions begin to add up into huge sums, that can be a problem and that can negatively impact your child's mental health. It can be a lot to take in, but as a parent, you can have a huge impact just by being aware, setting limits, using strong passwords and talking to your children frequently. Keep in mind that the risks are small and should be viewed against the fun and creativity that gaming can offer. Our final topic is all about keeping your data and ID safe. It's just part of operating in the digital world as we're all getting used to doing now. But there are some things that you may not know about yet. When chatting online, children sometimes give away personal information about themselves. And this might be their social media account, might be their birthday or where they live. And this information can be used or mined by organisations or people and this can lead to issues for your child now or maybe in the future. Sometimes this can result in something called identity theft, which is a real problem. ID theft is a problem in games like it is in other areas of online life. Um, but you can do a few things about it. A really good thing to do is to make sure that your child's account is set up with their age, because this means that the chat functions in games can be tailored to restrict the things that they can say that's appropriate to their age and keeps their identity secure. Identity theft can sound frightening, but there are things you can do to help your child. You can have conversations with them about fraudulent activity and who might be trying to take advantage of them and help them develop their critical thinking skills. Talk to them about never sharing personal information online and you can also set boundaries on those devices to prevent that personal information sharing. Remind your child what they post online can stay there for a very long time and be seen by lots of people. All of this may seem complex, but remember, gaming is a big part of many kids' lives. As well as being fun, they are actually learning important skills through games, which can help set them up for their future success. To recap, these are the top tips from the three issues we've covered. First, get to know the game ratings. Talk to your children about what the games involve and the importance of knowing who they are talking to. Next, set passwords and limits to any credit cards linked to their games. Make sure they understand the links between online spending and real world money, and never to accept money online from anyone. Lastly, explain the risks of sharing financial and personal information, not just for them, but their family and friends too. Have a look at the other content here on our hub but there's loads more to help you and your kids have fun safely. Gaming is opening up a world of opportunity. It's time you were in control. Or when next time your kids are playing, why not ask to have a go? You'll learn a lot and you might even enjoy it.